All right, ninja nerds, in this video, we're gonna talk about the adrenal gland, but specifically, we're gonna focus in on the zona reticularis. If you guys haven't already seen it, we already made a video specifically looking at the zona glomerulosa and its hormone, the zona fasciculata and its hormone. Okay, so first off, we have the zona reticularis. Now, zona reticularis is gonna be really important for producing specific types of gonadocorticoids, okay? And these are gonna be androgens, and we'll talk about them because they're, they're very weak androgens. But we have to start up from where usually all of these reactions are occurring. We have to start up in the hypothalamus. And again, these nuclei that are present up here in the hypothalamus are called the paraventricular nucleus. And they're secreting out into the hypophysial portal system corticotropin releasing hormone. And then corticotropin releasing hormone is stimulating these corticotropes within the anterior pituitary, right, to produce adrenal corticotropic hormone. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and we're going to blow up one of these zona reticularis cells. So specifically, what we're looking at over here is going to be the zona reticularis. Okay. So now, look what this adrenal corticotropic hormone is going to come and do. It's going to come over here, and it's going to bind onto this receptor. And you know this receptor is a G protein coupled receptor. So what happens is this G protein coupled receptor activates a, you guys already know it, a G stimulatory protein. That G stimulatory protein is normally bound to GDP, which keeps it off, but then it binds to GTP, which turns it on that G stimulatory protein then comes and activates a specific type of effector enzyme. What is that effector enzyme called? This effector enzyme is called adenylate cyclase, right? It's called adenylate cyclase. And that adenylate cyclase takes and converts ATP into cyclic AMP. And then cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A. And then what does that have to do with anything? Well, just like I've continuously told you guys, these hormones that are being made in this cell are not protein-based. They're not amino acid-based. They're steroid hormones. So what's the basis of steroid hormones? What do you have to start with? You have to start with cholesterol. So cholesterol is our basic unit for us to start building on. So here's our cholesterol. And then what happens with that cholesterol? The cholesterol gets converted into, specifically, pregnenolone. And then that pregnenolone can get converted into what's called progesterone. So what happens is this pregnenolone actually is acted on by a specific enzyme, and it's converted into 17-hydroxypregnenolone. So the 17-hydroxypregnenolone, he's going to get converted into another different type of basic unit here. This molecule is going to be called dehydroxy epiandrosterone. So it's called dehydroxy epiandrosterone. Now, look what else can happen. You know there's actually another way that we can have this reaction occur? So then look what can happen to the progesterone. The progesterone can actually get converted into another step here. So you know there's another step here, because you know what else can happen with the 17-hydroxypregnenolone? The 17-hydroxypregnenolone can get converted into 17-hydroxyprogesterone. But then look what can happen to this progesterone. I can take this progesterone, if I have the specific enzyme, which is the 17-hydroxylase, I can convert this into 17-hydroxyprogesterone. Then from the 17-hydroxyprogesterone, I can synthesize what's called androstene dione. So it's called androstene dione. So what's happened here? Let's go ahead and look. Cholesterol was converted into pregnenolone. Pregnenolone can get converted into 17-hydroxypregnenolone, or it can get converted into progesterone. If it's converted into 17-hydroxypregnenolone, that can get converted into dehydroxy epiandrosterone. This is one of the important ones. Or the 17-hydroxypregnenolone can get converted into 17-hydroxyprogesterone. Or if this pregnenolone forms progesterone, progesterone can get converted into 17-hydroxyprogesterone. 
then this 17-hydroxyprogesterone can get converted into androstenedione. dione But look what else can happen. You know this dehydroxyepiandrosterone? I can take this guy and I can convert him into androstenedione. dione Okay, now, why is all of this stuff important? Because these are going to be specifically gonadocorticoids. Very, very, very weak sex hormones. These are weak sex hormones. Which are these two weak sex hormones? Dehydroxyepiandrosterone and androstenedione. dione Now, we took this protein kinase A pathway. What the heck does this have to do with anything? I'm glad you asked. Again, it's important for a lot of these pathways. It can activate specific enzymes by phosphorylating them, right? So it can phosphorylate a bunch of different enzymes to allow for these reactions to occur. So he helps within the stimulus of a lot of these reactions by phosphorylating multiple different types of enzymes. Okay, so that's what allows for this reaction to occur. That's what the adrenocorticotropic hormone is doing. It's stimulating this protein kinases to stimulate specific enzymes involved in the cholesterol pathway. And the overall end result of this is DHEA, dehydroxyepiandrosterone, and androstenedione. dione. Now, what are these guys going to go and do? These gonadocorticoids or these weak sex hormones. They're going to come over here and they're going to act on the male and the female. So let's say that we take these two guys out here, okay? They're going to come over here and act on the male and they're going to come over and now also act on the female. So let's look at the male first. Their overall effect is pretty much the same. But what can happen is this DHEA, let's say that he, that he actually goes out here and he goes to the male, right? Or this androstenedione, dione, it goes to the male. Eventually what happens is all of it usually gets converted into androstenedione, dione, and that androstenedione dione in the male, specifically here in the testes, it's actually going to be converted. Let's say I converge these two, okay? What's the overall result? The androstenedione dione will be converted into testosterone. Okay? It'll be converted into testosterone. What about for the female? What are these going to do for the female? Well, for the male, what was the overall result? It helped in the stimulation or the formation of testosterone. Within this, it also can allow for, so let's say it works here on the female. Specifically, it works in the female at like the thecal cells, and what can happen? It can lead to the formation of estrogen, okay? And look at this. What's the overall effect of these guys? What's the overall effect of dehydroxyepiandrosterone and androstenedione dione on the male and the female? Well, it makes testosterone and it makes estrogen, but here's the really important point. So very, very minimal amounts of estrogen is produced, and very little minimal amounts of testosterone is produced. And again, why am I telling you this? Because these are weak, uh, weak specific types of gonadocorticoids. They're very weak androgens, okay? Sex hormones, that's what androgens is. They're sex hormones, very weak. But in overall effect, what is their overall effect? They love to be able to produce armpit hair. So look at this dude, he's becoming a man, right? So he gets some armpit hair. What else does it start helping with? Look at this. He's getting some hair on his chinny chin chin, right? So he's getting some hair on his chin. He's getting some hair here on the actual axillary region. And guess what? He's getting some pubes, okay? So it's also gonna help with the pubic, axillary, and facial hair growth. That's one of the effects. It also helps with like the skin, the skin secretions by the sebaceous glands too. So again, what is it helping with? It's helping with hair growth. But specifically, where? axillary, pubic, and we'd also say where else? We could also say facial hair, right? And then it's also helping with secretions, so oily skin secretions. So we can say sebaceous secretions, helping the skin to be nice and oily, right? What else does it help with? It also helps with the development of certain types of secondary sex characteristics. But again, more of its effect is on hair growth, like axillary, pubic, and facial hair, and certain types of sebaceous secretions. What else, though? This is one of the bigger effects. This guy, usually, it helps with libido. And there's a condition that we'll talk about where if they uh, 
actually make too much of this, their libido goes ham and they are horny all of the time. Okay, it comes back with a vengeance. So libido, it does have a little bit of effect on libido, sex drive. So it has a little bit of effect uh, of, of a similar actions on the female. It helps a little bit with the development of the secondary sex characteristics. So the breasts or the mammary glands, okay? What else does it help with? It also helps with, don't you guys laugh, pubic hair, right? Pubic hair growth and axillary hair growth, okay? And also, what else? Libido for the female too, okay? So in summation, the overall effect of these androgens is very weak. Not very many uh, different types of androgenic effects other than hair growth of the axillary region, the pubic region, the facial region, more facial for the male. Helps with sebaceous secretions of the hair and the certain types of skin, right? Also it helps with their sex drive, their libido. For the female, same thing, libido, uh, axillary hair growth, pubic hair growth, and a little bit of development for the secondary sex characteristics, okay? Obviously, whenever these individuals are making too much of this, it can increase libido, it can increase an excessive amounts of hair growth, it can increase the oily secretions, and it can affect all different types of uh, secondary sex characteristic developments, okay? It's called adrenogenital masculinization, and we'll talk about that. With the female, it actually can cause a lot of problems where even because it helps with the development of secondary sex characteristics like the breasts and even uh, the area called the cl clitoris, if this individual, this female, is making too much of these dehydroxyepiandosterone and androstenedione, their, their clitoris literally can start to resemble a small penis, okay? <laughs> All right, guys? We talked about how corticotropin releasing hormone can stimulate the anterior pituitary to make ACTH, how ACTH can act on the zonal reticularis cells within the adrenal cortex, and by activating protein kinases, they stimulate the synthesis through the cholesterol pathway of dehydroxyepiandrosterone and androstenedione. These are the two gonadocorticoids or weak sex hormones, androgens. What do these guys do? They act on the male and the female by helping with their development of secondary sex characteristics. Also, they help with hair growth axillary, pubic, and facial, more for the male for facial, but also with the female helps with axillary, pubic hair growth. Also, what does it help to do? It also helps with their sex drive via libido, right? So it helps with their sex drive, helps with different types of sebaceous gland secretions for their skin and for their hair to have more of an oiliness, right? But like I told you, if you make too much of these different types of DHEA and androstenedione, what can happen? It can actually cause the male to have an increased, like, of uh, vengeance like libido and it can also cause the female to have a lot of hair growth like maybe develop a beard and obviously a lot of bush growth down there and also their clitoris can start to resemble a small penis all right and again they help with the production of testosterone and estrogen but these are very very weak very very middle amounts of these hormones are being produced all right, engineers, in this video, we covered a lot on the zona reticularis and this adrenal gland here. I hope it all made sense. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next video, we're going to talk about the adrenal medulla and its hormones. All right, engineers, until next time.